so now that we've established the point 0.3 and the point 0.008 to add to it, let's get ourselves a 10 thousandths of an inch. language. Hello and welcome back to the Way the Native Chronicles. In today's episode, we're going to dig into the dark secrets of how to read a vernier scale. <clears throat> uh, a lot of reloaders need to do this because, especially for bullet casters, uh, they often have to slug their barrels with a a soft bullet, a soft lead bullet, and then from that they can measure the diameter of that bullet at its widest point and determine what size diameter they should cast their bullets to when they're putting them through a lubricizer and things like that because uh, the, ca the diameter of the bullet is really crucial to avoid things like leading and inaccuracy when you're shooting cast bullets. But it comes into play with a whole bunch of other aspects of reloading as well. So whether you cast bullets or not, you need to know how to measure things. Now, most often, uh, reloaders are going to get by just fine with a, a vernier cal with a, one of these calipers here. Uh, and when you really need to get very precise, then you start looking at things like these, eh? There's a micrometer. That's going to measure right down to a ten thousandth of an inch, whereas this type of device is going to measure to a thousandth of an inch. For the guys that are bullet casting, you want the micrometer, of course. You've got to get down to a ten thousandth. Uh, you're dealing with really small tolerances. Um, now, I'm a little bit of a weirdo, I guess, because everybody uses these dial calipers nowadays, and uh, here I am, I've been reloading for close to 45 years now, <laughs> so I'm st I, if stuff is working I just keep it and I don't, I don't even had dial calipers back when I started. If uh, I, I got this thing here and it's just, uh, you read off the vernier scale, right? It's, uh, we're going to take a close look at this, but there's no dial or nothing on there, there's no digital display, uh, but I'll tell you one thing, it, it always works and it's served me very well over the years. There's a kind of a misconception that these type of vernier scales are j so hard to read and that you you know you need to have really good eyes. You don't need very good eyes to read these things because it's just a matter of lining up ticks. So I'm going to show you how to do that with this uh, vernier caliper but even more important to do it with one of these rotating vernier scales. These are the tricky little guys to work with. Very confusing, but we're going to show you here how that works in close-up detail. So if you like this video before we start, click that subscribe button right now. Smash the like button because you know this is going to be good, right? Okay, let's get into this video and, and get into the details. Okay, let's see how a a vernier scale micrometer works, how you can read that. It's actually, for the uninitiated, it's almost impossible to figure these things out. So I hope you get something out of this video. I have my uh, micrometer here, and I've got three bullets. Uh, here's a 44 cal, a 45 cal, and a 30 caliber bullet. And I'm going to just measure this uh, 30 caliber bullet as an example. And what I want to do is take this, Open my jaws enough. You can have a locking mechanism here. Okay. I'm going to unlock it so that I can turn this. And I'm going to take this bullet and I want to look at it to see where the high points are. Because there's grooves and lands in, in a bullet, right? So you want the widest diameter portion. You take that, you place it between your jaws. And then you can take this dial and turn it until it makes contact. I'm going to just kind of hold this bullet because it tends to revolve it a little bit, right? So I'm going to turn it 
till it grabs just very lightly these are delicate instruments and once it's made contact this little end piece click now I know I've got a good set on the bullet without deforming it and I move this lever over to lock the position so none of these scales moves moves around so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to show you how to read these little scales here okay let's uh, see if we can explain how to read this vernier uh, dial here it's the the first thing to pay attention to is to look at these these mark these numbers here zero one two three you can see between each of these the zero and the one there's uh, three marks so that means each of them are uh, represent uh, 0.25 so this is 0 0.25 0 0.5 0 0.751 right and this part of the dial here when it's rotated a complete revolution it will move the distance of between these two marks so 0 0.25 is what it'll move every time you revolve this dial a complete revolution so this dial has numbers on it you can see here's a 5 and then there's a 10 up here it goes 10 15 20 25 right where it goes back to the zero there so <clears throat> what we have to uh, do when we're reading these these uh, micrometers is we have to add numbers together basically and the numbers that you use are numbers that are completely exposed in the first case here so this one here it, you can see the 0.3 mark exposed it's visible but this portion here that slides back and forth it covers the 0.25 so it's not quite to the 3.25 it's got to go a little further to get there it's not all the way there so let's only count the point three which is the first part of our measurement now we want to know how far it is past that point three and that's when we start to pay attention to these little ticks here okay and what we're looking for with these ticks is to see where they line up with regards to this zero here you see that zero right there's a line there that comes along and it intersects this plane here and you can see it falls in between the seven uh, no the eight and the nine there's ten so we've got five six seven eight nine ten so it's not quite to the nine but it's on the eight so we're going to add point uh, see each of these is let's let's say we're saying point three three uh, for here if it was all the way to the next tick it would be 0.325 so that's uh, 0 0.008 to get to here and if it got all the way to here it would be 0 0.009 but it doesn't go all, all the way there so we're going to count this 0 0.008 now the next thing we have to do is we have to know exactly how far past that point zero zero eight did we get when because we know it's somewhere past there from where this zero mark intersects this scale here right that's the part that's going to be a little tricky to show so i'm going to try to get the camera zoomed in and keep it in frame here in just a second <clears throat> okay so now let's let's move on to getting our ten thousandths of an inch mark here and that is going to involve looking examining these lines that strike down here so I think you can see that right these numbers go from zero all the way around to ten seven eight nine and then that's the ten right now what are those for what those are for is 
you can you want to find which one of these ticks here lines up perfectly with one of these lines here okay so that is uh, a very easy thing to do actually even if you don't have eyes that are that great you can see distinguish between which line lines up best and when I look at this it depends a little bit on the angle uh, that you're looking at from the camera I guess but I can see very clearly that this six this line lines up perfectly well with this line that's on the rotating cuff here so that means not that I use these numbers here you know the 10 to 15 to 25 I'm going to use this number here which is a six it's not this not the five not the seven they're both on either side of these lines there's only one line that lines up perfectly and that's the six so that's going to be my ten thousandths mark and we're ready now to take our three numbers which is the point three zero 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 <laughs> and the point zero zero eight that we got over here and then our point zero 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 six and add those together so let's take a look at how that works on paper if you recall what we first started off with and I'm writing at a bit of an angle here but we have zero point three zero 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 okay so there's our tenth our hundreds our thousands and our ten thousands then the next mark that we got was a zero point zero if it was up to 25 it would be 25 here but it was only up to eight so we're gonna put is that that was an eight here eh? let me just check this quickly yeah it was an eight so we we knew an eight with certainty it was a little bit past that eight but we don't know how much we got that last little bit when we pulled out that six there right because between each of the little ticks on that rotating thing is 10 so it was six of those six tenths of that tick so then we got zero 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 six Does that make any sense so all we have to do is just add these together and we get the measurement which is six eight zero don't mind my writing I'm writing in an angle here <laughs> and point zero point three oh eight six is the measurement the diameter of that bullet so does that kind of make some sense here it's uh just a matter of adding the numbers up right so I start with the point three here it's going to sum up a little bit and the point three here and then this one this revolving cuff that's 25 and all for complete revolution but I only got uh, to eight past it past the zero so that's uh, my point zero zero eight and then I looked around on this part here to see how much past that eight tick I was and I do that by lining up these little lines here and that wound up being my six so there's my six over here I just add these three numbers up and that's how you get your your measurement with a vernier scale now the next thing I'm going to do is Give you a quick rundown on how to use a vernier scale uh, calipers uh, for doing the same operation now these are only going to take us down to uh, a uh, thousandths of an inch not ten thousandths so i'm going to find my my widest part of the bullet and i'm going to move this scale till it, it grabs there okay and now we're going to get a reading of the of this scale now 
Hopefully you can see that good. What I'm looking for is this bottom scale since I'm using inches. Top is for metric. So I'm very similar to uh, with, that, uh, with that micrometer. I can see that the zero mark here is a little bit past the three but not all the way to the uh, the 0.325 mark which is the next mark so I'm going to just use that 0.3 first and now I want to find out it's somewhere between the 0.3 and the and 0.325 but how much very simple actually I look along this 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 uh, scale here with all these ticks I just got to find out which one of these ticks lines up with a tick above it. It's really as simple as that. So if I look at that, I'm looking at, here, I'm going to turn it to the side for myself. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it's uh, on the eight. It's on the eight. So the 8 seems to be where it lines up best. Well, let's see here. I'm looking at the 8 on the bottom, not the top here, right? So 5, 6, 7, 8. This one here lines up quite well with that 7 above it. So it's the 8 that I need next. So I add 8 onto the, onto the 3 there. So 0 0.300 and then I add point. 008 and I get a measurement of 0 0.308 now uh, if I looked at the 9 it's not it's very close to being lined up to the 9 too so uh, I might even say 9 but you know these things are not as accurate as uh, as the uh, micrometer of course but that shows you that the principle is the same you're lining up these ticks you just got to make sure that you're reading off the right scale so when I'm trying to read off the thousands then I'm reading these numbers not these ones first I'm reading this number and then I'm reading which one of these numbers lines up with a tick above it so hopefully that's uh, fairly clear well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got something out of it. And, of course, like we always say, you know, remember to click the uh, like button and the subscribe button. If this video has been useful to you, share it out. Get the word out. It helps the channel here. It helps keep content like this coming because uh, that's what keeps the wheels turning around here. So, uh, from the Way to Native Chronicles, God bless and catch you next time.